Over the last 25 years, I've had the privilege of interviewing and highlighting some truly interesting people. Everyone who is anyone, both the famous and the infamous, from presidents and their first ladies to kings and queens, movie stars and pop stars, captains of industry, heads of state, sports personalities, innovative entrepreneurs, and some pretty fascinating everyday people. Today, I'm proud to introduce you to Nancy Daggett Jensen, who upon receiving a piano for her 10th birthday, knew that playing the piano was what she was meant to do and is now dedicated to spreading her passion for playing piano to others. It's such a pleasure to say hello to you, Nancy. If I have one regret in my entire creative life, it's not learning to play the piano. So <laughs> I'm thrilled to talk to you today. I'd love to start off by talking about your passion for music. So how did that come about? Well, I was about six years old and my parents uh, were living in Oakland at the time. And there was a piano store right near Lake Merritt. And every time we'd go by that piano store, can I have a piano? Can I have a piano? And number one, they didn't have the financial means to grant me my wish at that point. And they also got uh, the advice, I guess, from someone that if I still wanted it on my 10th birthday, that would be the time to start because they would never have to tell me to practice. So I came home on my 10th birthday and there was this big upright piano in the corner and it was love at first sight. And my teacher that they had signed me up for uh, couldn't start me for about three months. So I was just getting uh, Jack and Jill magazines and there was some music written and I was pretending like I knew how to read. <laughs> anyway, it was um, the start of uh, the rest of my life. <laughs> and, and your, yeah. your long time, lifelong love of music. So that's right. What I love I, is that you've incorporated music and education. So over your career, what have you learned about education? Um, I think your students teach you as almost as much as what you teach them. Um, yeah, education has changed a lot in, in maybe 30 years ago. My students were just really interested in playing the piano because they enjoyed it. And unfortunately, now it seems to be um, something to check off on a college resume that, oh, yeah, I did certain... In California, we have something called Certificate of Merit and from the Music Teachers Association. And oh, they have to work through these levels so that they can tell the college that they have uh, completed this <laughs> accomplishment. So um, yeah, I, d I don't see, and, and unfortunately the kids that are really good also want to make money when they get out of college. So they don't go into music. They, uh, they go into medicine and law and of course computers living here in Silicon Valley. They, um, everybody's into computers. <laughs> well, I, I understand that everybody is into computers, but music honestly is its own language. At least that's what I've always been told, Nancy. And I know as a long time <laughs> educator, you agree with me on that. <laughs> you do. And I keep telling my students that are so into sports and I said, you're not going to be playing water polo at age 80, but you can still be playing the piano and having that be just a special thing for your soul. Well, I certainly agree with you um, uh, as a longtime uh, devotee to music. And as I said, it is my greatest regret creatively that I did not learn the piano. And so I'm going to live vicariously through you for the next few minutes. <laughs> <laughs> it's not uh, too late. <laughs> <laughs> so Nancy, um, what, what actually have been some of your proudest accomplishments as a music teacher? Um, probably twofold. Uh, we have something called the panel auditions, which is part of Certificate of Merit. And I've had maybe six students through the years to reach pan, uh, Young Artists Guild. And that's kind of like a semi-professional um, opportunity for uh, students to, to be hired for nominal fee to go around to the other branches okay. and uh, give concerts. Um, yeah, so I've had about 
um, six through the years on that. But I think I think of another case with my student Kathy, and I guess my life has always been kind of a, a inspiration to her. Awesome. So she's now um, thirty seven and. She went to college and got her music degree, got her master's degree, and she's uh, teaching piano and a mother of a young child. And she's also following my footsteps and that she is now president of the Steinway Society, which is uh, a group that is close and dear to my heart. Um, we set up a, a series of concerts and visiting artists come uh, and give concerts before COVID. <laughs> but uh, I've developed some um, some good friendships with these young concert pianists. And that that's a fun part of the job. There's a lot of headaches and it's all volunteer. You don't do any, you know, you don't get paid for this. But um, just a couple of weeks ago, we had a young Russian concert pianist come and visit us. And my daughter and I took him to Lake Tahoe for a few days. And, you know, it just, if he, he feels like family now because he stayed with us about two or three times. So that's kind of a long winded. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh -huh. No, but I like that because it actually brings me to my next question. What kinds of students do you actually take on as a music instructor? Well, I'm kind of, unique in that respect because I think every kid deserves a chance to, to learn. I have some colleagues that only take um, star winners, you know, and, and really kids that are devoted. Um, for many years, I was just doing intermediate and advanced. And one of my older colleagues at that point says she liked to keep her hand in at the lower level to start with a ranked beginner and and understand the learning process, what, what happens when you're just starting the piano. So um, I start doing that. And I would say maybe one third of my class now is ages six, seven, eight. And um, they, they learn differently. They're more excited. They're more um, adept to, to trying new things. And you don't hear, oh, I've got so much homework. I didn't have time to practice or I've got swim meet or I've got robotics. And so I'm enjoying the little ones. I don't have grandkids. So <laughs> the, these little ones are like my grandkids. <laughs> well, they are just, I mean, it just must warm your heart. Um, so I'm going to keep, as I said, I'm going to live vicariously through you for the next few minutes. <laughs> Can you share any of the success stories of students that really experience what I would consider marked improvement under your lessons? Um, I'm thinking of a little boy called Nathan, and he had uh, most of my are, of my students are Asian or Indian, um, Japanese, maybe a few. I have no whites whatsoever, <laughs> which is they're more in interested into sports. And I don't know, it just, you get known in the Asian community and the word kind of spreads. So Nathan was- That's a good thing. It's a good thing that people feel inclusive, especially in this day and age. Um, we want um, all communities to feel like they can achieve. And I'm glad that you provide that opportunity for young oh, people. Yeah. yeah, the, the uh, <laughs> in fact, I'm rather- uh, Prejudice. If somebody calls with a with a foreign name, I'm much more able to say, "Yeah, I might be able to find a spot for you." <laughs> if it's uh, Sally Jones or, or uh, you know, some. Well, wait! Some don't pick on us Jones girls here. Thank I'm you sorry. very much. <laughs> so, you know what I mean. You know, absolutely, absolutely, oh, okay. yeah. absolutely. Right. Anyway, so, Nathan. Tell me about came. Nathan. Okay, Nathan is. <laughs> the joy of my life right now. He came about a year ago, February, and he'd been studying with a colleague of mine. And she has a huge class of about 60 some students. And so she started developing some health issues. So she farmed most of her kids out and she sent Nathan to one teacher that didn't work out. Then she sent him to another teacher and they were very discouraged. So they, they said, you've got to recommend somebody else. So she called me and she says, I know you're busy, but you know, I'd like you to hear him. So she brought Nathan and 
I could tell he really needed a lot of work on technique, on how to make his fingers uh, really do what they need to do to be able to play fast and to be able to play legato and, and singing melody, et cetera. Anyway, he's absolutely turned around. Um, in fact, very supportive parents. He was complaining that his upright piano didn't sound like my Steinway grand. So mom and dad went and bought him a $90,000 Steinway uh, six foot three piano. And um, his progress ah! is zoom, you know? Wow. <laughs> yeah. Sometime it is the instrument, Nancy. <laughs> <laughs> well, this one was a very special one because um, it had been uh, in an apartment of Helene Grimaud, who is a very well-regarded uh, pianist. And uh, Steinway is building her a new nine foot piano. So she had this particular instrument in her house. And so it's been a little broken in, which was great. And the parents saved about $10,000 <laughs> because it was used, but just by um, someone of her caliber. What are the challenges or what, what are some of the great challenges you think you face in your work? Um, you've outlined that a lot of young people are no longer into the creative arts. Um, would you say that's the biggest challenge right now? Uh, that's the biggest challenge and uh, overachieving parents that both work. And before COVID, you know, I was teaching at my home and trying to get the parents' work schedule so they could bring them. So I wouldn't have to teach five nights a week and all day on Saturday. And so that that's one of the challenges. But I just, I miss the days when kids study because they really love music. Nancy, what do you think is the most important lesson that you teach your students? And then flip it for me. And what's the most important lesson that they've taught you? Okay, I think the most important lesson is that you have to persevere. You know, things are hard. You keep working at it until you break through that barrier. And then it gives you such a feeling of success that you have tackled the goal and come out on the top of it. And as far as what they teach me, it's just... Um, I think it keeps you young being around young people because their attitudes are so fresh and, and innocent. <laughs> and it's definitely a, a two-way process, I think. And the good part about the kind of work that I do is that you don't see a kid for one year in a group of 30, but you sometimes see these kids from eight until all the way they go off to college and they keep in touch. Uh, I get invited to their weddings and I'm part of their, um, you know, not everybody keeps in touch, but the ones that do are, are really special. I had a young man here on Friday, uh, just graduated from uh, John Hopkins and he came and he, he was a really pretty good pianist. Um, but anyway, he's just, uh, Full of, he still loves music, but of course, his main thing is biomedical, something or other. But <laughs> just something that. little like that, something yeah. <laughs> that will save lives and change lives, just yeah. something along those lines. Right. And you are <laughs> such a pleasure to talk to. I'm just wondering, um, as we come to the conclusion, what's the one thing you'd like the viewer of this video feature to walk away with? Somebody said once to find, find a job, no, find something you like to do and you'll never work a day in your life. I won't go that far because it is hard work, but um, it just, uh, find something that, that really you're passionate about. And I think that comes across to students and their families, et cetera. And it, it just, it's not like a nine to five job, putting in time, punching a time card. It's a very creative thing. And um, I don't know. I just, I feel like God put me on this earth and said, go teach piano. <laughs> and uh, that's what I'm trying to do to honor him. <laughs> what a beautiful, beautiful sentiment. Um, you know, when I, when I thought how I wanted to introduce you, it was clear what your passion is. And um, I wanted to honor that passion by finding you a quote that I think sort of summarizes 
uh, what you've done in your career. And it's music gives a soul to the universe, wings to the mind, flight to the imagination, and life to everything. That is from Plato. And I thought of you as I read your biography and looked so forward to our conversation today. Thank you very much for bringing your passion to music to all of us. Thank you very much.